Hi, it's Derry. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to carry on with the series I've been doing where I've been looking at some recommended pens. This week, we're looking at follow-on pens, but from mainland China. Here they are, these are the five that we're going to look at. Join me now, down on the mat, we'll take a quick look at each pen, and I'll give you my quick thoughts on them. Welcome down to the table. Follow on mainland China pens. What I've done is I've done a search on AliExpress, which is where I get my pens from. So the prices I'll give are what I was able to find in the last week. I'm going to fetch the pens out in increase in price order. So the first pen, this is the Jinhao 100 Centennial. This is like a duo fold style pen. Very nice pen. I love the blue color of this. It's available in loads of different colors. I've got three of these at the moment. And what I'll do is I will buy some more, but I'll only buy them when I see a color that I like. And you know, I find this blue is quite pretty. It's duo fold style. So we've got the black ends, we've got a little Jinhao logo there up on the top. One of the things I'm doing in this video, there will not be multiple pens from the same manufacturer. So this is the only representative of Jinhao. There are a lot of other Jinhao pens that would fit in this category. So we've got here a Jinhao. I'm just going to call it the 100. It's the Centennial. This has got a medium nib. I only buy Centennials or these Jinhao 100s with a medium nib. I believe there is a fine nib available as well. Price-wise, this was 18 Aussie dollars. The price I quote is excluding postage where possible, because depending where you are in the world, the postage cost will be different. The ink is by Robert Oster, and it's blue water ice. It's a very nice ink, and I often see some shading coming through with this ink. Not seeing much at the moment. This paper is rhodia paper. Line variation, no pressure. And there's some pressure. So it gets slightly wider line, but it's a fairly stiff nib. None, with, none, with, none, and with. So again, here, you can't really see much of a difference. I'll move the mic down to the page so you can hear the pen right. It's a nice nib to write with. There's a pleasant tactile feedback to it. Really enjoyable to use. So this is the Jinhao 100 Centennial. Just move the page up ever so slightly. I'll keep moving the page up as we go through. Next pen. It's by Pen BBS. This is a Pen BBS 308. Again, I've got a couple of these. There's a load of Pen BBS models. You know, they're very in price as well. But I just picked this one as a good example. And I think this again... It's a good follow-on pen. This particular one is this transparent green. It's called Mojito. Loads of different colors. I've got this one. I've got a blue one as well. One of the things that I struggle with with pen BBS pens is nib selection. Very hard to get a medium nib. So this one is a fine. My preference in all my pens is medium and above. You know, broad nibs I love. 1.1 stub nibs I love. So when I get a fine nib, you know, it's still, it's quite usable, it's quite pleasant, but just not my preference. So bear that in mind. Cartridge converter pen, so was a gin, how I should have shown that. This one, it's all resin. So although I use a converter, I think this may be possible to eyedropper this. Where I'm not certain is up here at the top. I think that's all sealed, but that's something you may want to check. Maybe put some water in and leave some water in for a while if you're going to eyedropper it. So we've got here a Pen BBS 308. You can see here the difference in the line. Although it doesn't seem as bad, what I have done with this nib though is I've used uh, Doug from Inquiring Minds is seven um, inky, 
is seven steps i think it is our seven presses to inky happiness so i did put a bit of pressure seven times doing a, a line down which did increase the wetness a bit anyway it's a fine nib cost wise we have got a jump in price we got up to 32 aussie dollars the ink is by cult pens and it's deep dark green love the name of this every time i see it all i'm thinking is deep dark green i really really like it not exactly a perfect match but i don't care it's green i like the green ink it's a greenish pen it'll do for me line variation so here's no pressure that's with some pressure so we do get a slightly wider line. The nib doesn't feel as stiff as the Jinhao 100s. So none, with, none, with, none, and with. Not a pen though that you get if you want line variation. I'll move the mic so you can hear it right. This pen feels more like I'm writing with a pencil. It's definitely a stiffer feeling nib. Although I said earlier, it doesn't feel as stiff when I'm doing my line variation. But when I'm writing, just with my normal writing, there's got really pleasant feedback. Hopefully you could hear it. I could certainly feel it as well through the nib. It's got a nice tactile feel to it. So this is the Pen BBS 308. Let's move this up. Up next, one of the first Chinese pens I bought. This is the Moonman or Marjon M800. There's four different colors available in this. I've got all four. There's two different types of nibs available. There's a Bot nib and there's a Moonman nib. The price I'm going to quote is for you to get it with a Moonman nib. You do pay a little bit extra for that Bot nib. Although saying that, I think, I'm not sure, this might actually be the bot nib. Another one cartridge converter. This is in the Leonardo Memento Zero style. actually bought it because of that, because I got this before I bought a Leonardo Memento Zero. I wanted to make sure that I could get on with the section, and I actually love this section. It's one of the nicest sections I've got. The way it just tapers down, and then we've got this nice straight area here. Very comfortable. I hold my pens down low, so that's why this is perfect for me. The pen does feel a little bit on the short side, but not unusably so. I tend to use this unposted. So we've got here, I'm going to call it a Marjon. Marjon. I keep wanting to write that as in the board game Marjon. So this is the M800. It's a fine nib, the only come in the choice of fine or fine. To get it with the Moonman nib is about 45 Aussie dollars. I'm not sure if they do the Bok one anymore. I couldn't find it when I was looking. But when I bought this, I paid an extra $10 for the Bok nib. The ink is by Diamine. And it's ochre. Very nice shade in ink. Loads and loads of colour variation in this as I'm writing. As you can see here, you know, you can see we've got dark areas and then Right next to that with this gorgeous lightness to it. Really pops off the page to me. Line variation. There's none. There's with. So none, with, none, and with, none, and with. So we can see here we're starting to get a little bit of line variation. The pen's not designed for it. I'm pushing to get this. We'll move the mic down to the page. Again, we've got a pencil-like feedback to it. The nib, fairly stiff filling, although we do have enough to give that line variation. Love this. I love the way it feels when I write. It's just, I don't know how best to describe it. You know, it's nearly a perfect pen for me, to be honest. 
very very nice to use i say i've got all four colors if they ever do release another color it would be virtually an instant buy for me and at 45 dollars for what you get i actually think it's quite reasonable so this is the marshon m800 move the page up again just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming would you like to help support the channel if so please consider joining as a member as a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel a link will be in the description down below. Next up, a slightly different looking pen here. This is the Asvine and this is the V169. This is a fairly heavy feeling. The whole outside is covered with this this metal. I want to say it's like like a, a spider's web a little bit with holes in it. Don't know how best to describe it, but very, very pretty. Very weighty for that. There's a number of different colours available for that lower resin. I like this one. You know, it's a greeny colour. I like my greens. Not going to work it. This one's a vacuum fuller. Can get quite a lot of ink into this pen. Number six size nib. Same with, to be honest, all of the pens so far. They're all number six size nibs. So that means you could easily swap them around if you want to. So we've got here a pen that worked right. Let me just go and play with this on the side. Apologies for that. Not sure why it didn't start up. Normally this works quite well. So we've got Asvine and again we're getting issues. Let's see if we can get any further. So Asvine V169. And this, it's got a medium nib on it. As you've seen, we've got some issues writing with this pen. I think it actually may be to do with the ink. I've only had this ink in here a little time, and whenever I've used this pen with other inks, it's been fine. What I've just done there, I've just pulled the piston out a little bit to see if maybe it's the bottom of this vacuum piston that's maybe blocking off the ink from flowing. So let's see how we go with the rest of the writing sample. So the price for this was 52 Aussie dollars. The ink by Herban and it's Diablo Menth. And again, we're stopping writing. There we go, it's going again. So it seems as if there's some kind of ink flow issue. One of the things I will do is I'll, I'll try pulling out the nib and feed and giving that a clean, see if that helps. Line variation. So there's none, here's with. The nib is quite soft, but we're getting a lot of railroading. None, with, none, with, none, and with. I don't think this ink is helping. As I say, all the other inks I've had in here had no issues. I'll move the mic and we'll see if we can write a sentence. It's nice. Again, we've got a fair bit of feedback. It's a softer feeling nib. A very pretty pen to look at. Not overly impressed by this ink, I will be honest. I do have a small bottle of it. I think just in this pen just does not suit. Maybe what I need is to get into an even wetter pen. Maybe that might help. But in here, certainly seems to be struggling. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm getting those issues. I say I'm going to take a look at the nib and feed out. What I'll do is I'll actually pull that out later on and I'll give it a good clean and I may even put it through my ultrasonic cleaner. One of the previous inks I've had in here was a shimmer ink. So I'm wondering maybe some of the shimmer might get stuck in the feed which may be causing an issue. But that's the Asvine V169. Right, let's just move that up one final time so we can get to the bottom of the page. 
The final pen, there's a couple of different versions of this. All the same shape, and this is the Wingsung 698. This particular version has got a 14 karat gold nib. There is a version which doesn't have that 14 karat gold, it's got a steel nib, and that is substantially cheaper. So the price I'm going to be showing for this is the price with a gold nib. For a gold nibbed pen, it's actually quite inexpensive. I like the shape of this. It's nice, it fits really well in the hand. It's a smallish nib, I say, there's the 14 karat gold nib. This is a piston filler. Now I've got this transparent version, loads of different colors. One of the things that I need to remember with this, to work the piston, and I think this is a really good idea, you've got to pull this top up and release it. Otherwise it's stuck and it's really hard to twist. Pull that up, now I'm not going to twist it now, but then it's really easy. So that's just something to bear in mind with this pen, and it's one thing I'm forever forgetting to do it. So it's a nice size, a little bit thin in a section, but that's not too, it's not, but it's livable. So we've got here a wing sun. 698. Again, very limited in nib choices. When I was checking, you could get fine, or you could get fine. But this is a 14 karat gold nib. I have a steel version. The steel version writes really nice, but is a bit more stiffer. So the price of this, because of that gold nib, was 81 Aussie dollars. You see there we've got some railroading on that line down. One of the issues with this, it's very, very sensitive to pressure. The ink is by Diamine and is Mon. Let's see. Pressed a bit too hard, so we stopped writing. Let me just get this going again. There we go. All I did is give it a shake. So it's Dying Mine and it's Mon Bodo's Hat. Again, we've got issues with the ink. Well, I'm having a good day today for writing, aren't I? Mon Bodo's Hat. What I've just done is I've primed the feed a little bit. Hopefully that will help. So no pressure, with pressure. Be careful you don't put too much pressure on it. It's very, very soft, very easy to get that real road in. None, with, none, and with, none, and with. Then I'll move the mic to write the sentence. Loads of audible feedback with this pen. You can really hear it writing. In terms of tactile feedback, I actually don't feel that much. The nib, though, is very soft. So that's one of the things which I say you need to be aware of because it's easy to put too much pressure on. So this is the Wingsung 698. What I'm going to do now is fetch in all the pens for one final look. So here we go with my top five follow-on pens. We've got the Jinhao 100 Centennial, the Pen BBS 308, the Marjon M800, the Asvine V169, and the Wingsung 698. If I had to pick my favourite of the lot, this is a dead simple one. My favourite is the Marjon M800, quickly followed by the Jinhao 100, but I just love this Marjon pen. Very, very nice pen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What follow-on pens would you recommend? We've looked at my selection of five. I'd love to start building a list of what other people recommend. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.